Okay, now we're doing the final chapter of Galatians, Galatians 6. Uh, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I guess practical admonitions in Galatians 5 and 6, and people often look at it like... Um, it happens in many of the books where it's the uh, positional kind of, well, they think it's positional um, tr spiritual truth in the earlier chapters and then, okay, now let's move on to, but what, do you, what have you got to do, you know, the practical stuff? And, and they, pre they throw out all of the, the spiritual truth in favour of um, law-keeping to for the practical admonitions but you know he spent the first four and a bit chapters talking about um, don't go back to the law and the difference between flesh versus spirit and what will happen if you're walking in the flesh you'll bite and devour one another and and you will be doing those uh, works of of the flesh that uh, that the unrighteous people do and will be condemned to hell for. So it's not saying, and obviously you're not going to be condemned to hell for any sin you commit. Um, it's just that they are the works of the flesh and those who aren't saved are in the flesh all the time. Um, whereas we have been transferred out of um, that realm. We're in, we're, we're in the spirit now. And, you know, this, the flesh is still there, but we are not in the flesh, we are in the spirit. And we're called to walk in the spirit rather than walking in the flesh, because you can do either. And it's all about your mindset. What are you focused on? What do you believe? Are you agreeing with God's word? Or are you going back to the law, thinking that you're not complete, that you've got to do something to please God, thinking that there's, you know, he did, he did some of the work, like forgiving your sins, but the rest is on you, and you've got to, you've got to take some responsibility now and, and prove God to God that you're a good little Christian now and, you know, like almost pay him back for what he did, uh, that kind of thinking. Um, that, that's not how we're supposed to, that's not how to walk in the Spirit. The Spirit is fully recognising what Jesus accomplished on the cross, not minimising it in any way, but recognising the full extent of what he accomplished on the cross. You know, he crucified our flesh. He was absolutely done with it. He's not interested in your performance in the flesh anymore. It's crucified. It's buried. And you've died to the law. So there is no going back to the law as far as he's concerned. So um, you've got to keep that in, all of that in mind when reading these admonitions. And they need to be based on what we've been told about not going back to the law and walking in the spirit. So when, when we see a believer um, overtaken by a fault, uh, only those who are spiritual, who, and that means, you know, walking in the spirit and knowing that we're not uh, under the law. So, and, and knowing that flesh is, um, that there is still flesh and flesh is, is if we, um, you know, allow it to, to rule, it's going to produce the works of the flesh and the way to, the way for the flesh to be subdued is, is through the spirit. And, and so someone who is spiritual, fully aware that um, it's, it's the problem of the flesh and that they also have flesh and they don't think any higher, higher of themselves than anyone else. They know they're fully capable of doing as, as much as anyone else in terms of sin. And... Um, recognizing that and then and then showing them the 
the way out, which is walking in the Spirit, knowing who you are in Christ and what he has accomplished on the cross and that the flesh is, is crucified and he's not expecting anything of the flesh and we need to keep our mindset on the things of the Spirit. So, um, yeah, that's how we bear one another's burdens. Um, ultimately, Christ is, is the one who bears our burdens. And so when we go to a, a, um, a brother who is overtaken by fault, then we, we point him to Christ. Um, the, point him to the gospel, point him to what was accomplished for him on the cross. And, and there, in that way, Christ, is, Christ takes that burden from them. Um, and... You know that is brotherly love. We're pointing. We're we're acknowledging that they are saved by the same gospel we are saved by, and showing them what Christ has done for them, which He also did for us. Um, comforting one another with uh, the truth of of what Christ accomplished. Um, and in that way, we're not thinking more highly of ourselves. So, verse three: For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing he deceiveth himself um, we know we're all the same in terms of our flesh our flesh can is as bad as the next person's flesh and we you know we need to remember that <laughs> and not think that we're better than someone else because we're not sinning as much as they are um, it's really all a matter of what are you setting your mind on and we need to um, encourage brothers and sisters to have that same mindset that we have um, and that's what the New Testament ministry is it's sharing the riches that we have in Christ with everyone else and comforting others with the comforts that we've been comforted with by God um, verse 4 but let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Uh, we don't want to go laying our burdens on on others, you know, um, excessively. Um, yes, we can go to each other um, for help and um, to, you know, share our emotional burdens with others. But there, you know, there is a limit. We we don't just do it um, to wearing everyone out. We need to, to keep, um, keep in mind um, the limits of our, of our brothers and sisters. And, um, you know, our flesh, I, I guess what I'm saying is that we all have the burden of our own flesh. You know, our, our flesh, we know what it's capable of and it's, it, it is a burden for us. And it, the only way to deal with it is to lay it at Jesus's, Jesus's feet. Um, and that we do that by reckoning our old man crucified and buried. Um, verse 6, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Um, so that's... Uh, you know, some people say that's about money, but it's, um, you know, it, in the New Testament ministry, people share what uh, the, the riches of Christ with us and, and you can share it back with them, you know, just encouraging each other in the Lord. Um, and verse 7, be not deceived, God is not mocked for what, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the f flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Now verse 7, oh goodness, that has been <laughs> abused by a certain person who shall remain nameless. But um, uh, yeah, it tends to be used out of context. Uh, but clearly we can see, you know, we, we've read in, in Galatians 4 about um, spirit versus flesh, uh, Ishmael versus Isaac, uh, Mount Sinai versus 
uh, Mount Zion and and that um, nothing good comes of the flesh and the, the the children of the flesh persecute the children of the of the spirit and that there are works of the flesh so when you're going back to the law Mount Sinai Ishmael um, the works of the flesh become manifest and so when you are walking in the flesh you're sowing to the flesh and going back to the law is sowing to the flesh and when that happens you reap you you reap as you sow you you reap corruption you reap um, those works of the flesh which were listed in Galatians 5 I think yes um, and but if you if you sow to the spirit you know walking in the spirit agreeing with God's words setting your mind on the things of the spirit but, uh, agreeing with what God accomplished on the cross that your flesh was crucified and buried with Christ and you've been risen to new life and it's his life his righteousness his sanctification his holiness that he is um, imputed to you and you are in him baptized into his death you know all of that stuff um, and acknowledging that we walk by faith we live by faith we don't uh, try to please God in our own strength and all of that and when you do that you reap that you know life life giving spirit um, the life that comes through the spirit which is everlasting life everlasting you know that the fountain um, of life the fountain the, was it the river of the water of life that flows um, which is Christ in the spirit um, so that's the kind of thing we want to reap we want to reap from the spirit not from the flesh um, and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men especially unto those who are the household of faith and you know when you're walking in the spirit you you're going to be doing good especially to the household of faith and that can that can involve you know physically providing things to people in need but it can also be the ministry, you know, um, sharing the good things of God, um, the comforts we've received with each other, um, and you know, pointing out false doctrine. That's one of the best things we can be doing, and we certainly aim to do a lot of that um, because there's so much false doctrine out there, and um, it sets people free when they know. <laughs> like for example what Galatians is really about um, it's such a, an amazing book to set people free and I suspect many people have not even read it um, okay verse 11 you see how large a letter I have written unto you with mine own hand um, I think that's just possibly because people were writing that is in Paul's name that were not from him. Um, verse 12, as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution of the cross, uh, for the cross of Christ. Um, for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But... God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Yeah, so the Judaizers, they came along and they wanted um, to get these Gentiles circumcised and, and so that they could boast in them and say, look what we've done, we've got these, we've turned these... Um, filthy Gentiles into sanctified Jews <laughs> you know we've fixed them and now they're pleasing to God because they're trying to keep the law but 
the fact is these Judaizers were not even keeping the law. Obviously, no one can keep the law, um, but they made a show of having trying to educate these Gentiles to, to get them to follow the law. Um, but they weren't even, they were hypocrites, they're not even keeping all of themselves. And um, it was done so that they could boast and glory in the flesh of the Gentiles and say, look what we've done. Um, but Paul is like, I glory in nothing but the cross. Um, and that he is uh, crucified, the world is crucified unto him and him unto the world. Um, so the world, while it can mean the wider world, um, it's everything that's not Christ and, um, re you know, institutional, institutionalized religion of any kind in, is part of the world because it's not of it's not of God um, and certainly if you lived in Israel at that time the whole nation was religious you know <laughs> um, so it was the world to them um, but we're crucified to it we're crucified to that institutionalized religion or whatever it is whatever version because you know even atheists have their own religion. They, everyone has a religion. It's just so they they think they don't. They think they're a religious, but they really they really do um, believe um, something about you know that they are a god. They're their own god, or um, they they're actually angry at God. So they say I'm an atheist because they hate God, even though they actually do deep down believe in God. Um, and they've turned it into a, they, they, they call it non-religious, but it really is like an anti-God religion. Um, so yeah, the world really is just everything besides Christ. Um, so yeah, we're dead to it and it's dead to us. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. So the law benefits nothing, whether you're circumcised or not, does not matter. What matters is the new creation um, it's and you know you you individually are not the new creation um, it's the the body of Christ really um, which we are a part of um, that's the new the new creation I think the new man um, and we're to walk in that so as many as walk according to this rule According to Christ, according to the new creation, um, the Spirit, peace be upon them, and mercy upon the Israel of God. And so this phrase, the Israel of God, is not saying we are now part of Israel or we've become Israel or replaced Israel or whatever you want to say. Um, Israel is the, the name that God gave Jacob um, after he, um, they, you know, they wrestled Jacob wrestled with a man all night, which was actually the pre-incarnate Christ. Um, and, and he was trying to get from God the blessing that he already had. And he wanted it so badly. It's like, well, you've already got it. But he still, he's like, I won't let you go until you bless me. Um, and physically he prevailed. And then... Um, God touched his thigh and weakened it so that from then on he had to walk with a cane. Um, so he and, and he changed his name to Israel. Um, and so 
um, it's it's a you know the we, a weakened man. Um, so we are weak. Um, it's like it's circumcision, like the cutting off of the strength of the flesh. When Abraham, um, you know, God promised Abraham the seed. Abraham went and tried to make that promise happen by by um, going in with Hagar and having an Ishmael. And, um, but God did not recognize Ishmael because it was a work of his own flesh. It wasn't a work of God's promise. And so finally, um, you know, he got... Um, he did receive the promise, Isaac, and God um, implemented the covenant of circumcision. And circumcision means, you know, cutting of that member that reproduces in the flesh. Um, so it represents the cutting off of the strength of the flesh. And so it's the same idea with, with uh, Jacob becoming Israel and becoming weakened so that God is the one who has to do the work, has to fulfill the promises. Um, he wants the people, a people that um, walk by faith and don't rely on their own strength, their own flesh to bring about the promises of God. He's promised so many wonderful things and he just wants us to walk by faith and trust that he will bring them about and that we don't try to bring them about on our own. And that's the lifelong struggle of the Christian is to let go of our own self-righteous efforts to try to bring about what God has promised. Some Christians never give up and they just keep on trying their whole life. But um, he wants us to realize that our, we have no strength, that we are weak and he will bring situations into our life that weakens us and shows us our need for him to do the work while we, while we rest in him. So that's uh, about the Israel of God. From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you in spirit. Oh, sorry, be with your spirit. Amen. Okay, so you can see um, that Galatians is uh, is is not about um, just getting saved and and going to heaven. It's about living the Christian life, um, and everything God promises um, that God promised to Abraham that you know the, the is the blessing of the gospel. Um, is received by the Spirit, so the um, the promise of the Spirit. So we we are qualified in justification to receive the Spirit, and through the Spirit we receive everything in the Christian life. And so we're to walk by faith, and um, you know wait for the righteousness um, from God, and He is the one who performs the work. He is the one who produces the fruit of the Spirit in our lives and all we're required to do is um, believe, um, walk by faith um, and, you know, not go back to the law but actually acknowledge that we are dead to the law and we are to walk by faith and he's, he's the one who's going to keep the promise and bring about what he has promised in our lives. Um, it's abundantly clear. So um, don't let anyone convince you otherwise. It's um, salvation and how we live are not two separate things. We don't get saved by grace and then walk by law. It's, it's all by grace through faith. We, um, the just shall live by faith. So as we're justified by faith, we live by faith. We walk by faith. It doesn't stop once we're saved. Okay, I hope that's blessed you. Talk to you later. Bye.